Then come on now. I don't. I don't blame our spotter for putting in burn. I blame my goblins player for showing a lightning bolt when he could have shown literally any other card. <laughs> All right. So here, hunter one for Mike is a dryad militant. Two one that exiles all instant sorceries as they go to the graveyard. There is a 1-1 one, one Mog Fanatic. It's going to go ahead and sacrifice. Kill off the Militant. It triggers our Foundry Street Denizen. Then we're going to play a Goblin Guide. We're getting in for 5 here. Yeah, let's get the beats going. Mike down to 15. Picks up a Forest thanks to Goblin Guide. And then we'll go back to Mike for his turn 2 here. Strangle Root Geist, not a bad one as it lets you block and then can block again afterwards. Matthew's going to have a read of that one. The 2 1 Undying Hasty Strangle Root Geist, not utilizing its haste right here, but uh, a third mountain for Matthew. We have another Foundry Steep Denizen, a Dragon Fodder, and another Mog Fanatic in hand. Here is another Denizen. And then we're going to play a Dragon Fodder to get a pair of Goblin Tokens. And pump up Denizens a little bit more. We get to get in this turn for six. We have a Goblin Guide trigger first. It's going to reveal a copy of Ronus the Indomitable. Uh, I feel like you just want to block the Denizen. Yeah. Yeah. Mike agrees. He'll take two and fall to 13, and then his Strangle guys will go ahead and undie, come back as a 3-2. So uh, it is safe from the Mog Fanatic in the hand of Matthew right now. Ronus, a little unfortunate, can't, uh, can't block at the moment. Mike's hand looks to be all lands, a Blossoming Defense, and a Ronus. So, yeah, a F Felian, that's... It's pretty accurate. <laughs> oh, we have a dry Milton as well? Okay, that's that's better. So Dryad Militant, uh, I wouldn't... Wow, we did the draw another one drop. All right, we're just going to play our hand out here. So we're going to play a 2-2 with haste and a 1-1 that will be sacrificed to try and kill the Militant, which I have to imagine Mike's going to respond to by saving with his defense. Um, mm-hmm. Pump up the Denizen a little more. And in we come for a bunch of damage. So, pair of Goblin Guide triggers are going to reveal this member. Okay. So, everything but Fanatic gets to come in. He is... Is he going to sacrifice before blocks? It looks like no. So, Mike's going to go ahead and go to blocks here. I think you just put... Oh, wow, yeah, I guess put Militant in front of the Foundry. Yeah, that's how I'd block as well. He can try to save one of these creatures. He'll take four and fall to nine. He decides not to try and save one without the Blossoming Defense. So, again, I think the last cards in his hand here are Land, Blossoming Defense, and Ronus. Uh, he also drew this member there, which is going to cost him four life to use. So he doesn't have a creature this turn. He's going to have to just say go. Uh, he is able to kill Goblin Guide. It'll, again, it'll cost him four life, but... Yeah, Ronus, that's fine. It can't block anyway. It's just a 5-5 five, five indestructible right now. That gets to pump other creatures. Alright, the draw is... Quest for the Goblin Lord. Jeez. <laughs> Ah, uh, the good old turn four, turn five quest for the Goblin Lord. <laughs> for those of you not familiar with this uh, constructed bomb, there it is there. So red for an enchantment. Whenever a goblin enters the battlefield under your control, you get to put a quest counter on the go quest for the Goblin Lord. When it has five or more. Goblins you control get plus two plus oh. There is a leatherback Baloth. So it looks like Matthew didn't realize that um, Ronus couldn't block. 
and only attacked with his goblin tokens last turn, chose not to sacrifice the goblin guide, even though it wouldn't have been sacrificed, but... Uh, lightning bolt drawn. I've lost my camera, apparently. One second here. There we go. We're back. All right. Um, yeah, so now Ronas can block. Okay. So he goes to five... Lightning Bolt has him at two, essentially. So Matthew's really close, but Aspect of Hydra drawn. Yeah. All these all these just modern all-star cards coming out to play in this round. <laughs> um, all right. Aspect of Hydra right now gives, what, plus four? So we have plus six, so at the moment we can attack for 15. Man, we're five off of lethal here. That sucks. <laughs> um, Matthew's also a goblin guy, or a goblin grenade away from winning the game. Yep, you heard that correctly. Mike is just going to go ahead and pass the turn. He needs to find more damage. Mountain is not going to do anything here for Matthew. It's just going to be a little more mana that he doesn't need. Yep. Yeah, Mike going to read that one, so shockingly. Not, not aware of the best quest in Magic. Gonna gonna have a read of that bad boy. Yeah. Mike going sure. Yeah. This is the turn to play that. And uh, it looks like we're just gonna shift the turn back, so uh, I don't know what he drew. It might have been Colonian Tusker. No, it's, it's that's a better one, it's scavenging ooze. Yeah, that one's a lot better. Yeah. Matthew says, yeah, that's that's fine. Yeah, I mean, no he's not. It's not that the grenade at all now. He has life from the scoos. He's dead to, he's dead to grenade and lightning bolt. So sure he's dead to grenade, but he's not dead to just grenade is important. Goblin Pile Driver will put a quest counter on to quest for the Goblin Lord. Pro Blue, going to be a big difference here. Um, Scavenging Ooze is going to save Mike this game, I think. He's at 8 right now. Um, and he's going to untap and get out of range of Goblin Grenade. Plus Lightning Bolt, so... Uh, Treetop Village, the 3-3 three, three Trample Land for, like, what, one or a green turns it into a creature, so not bad. Uh, Mike thinking here. Just going to pass the turn back again. Foundry Street Denizen is the draw here for Matthew. Like, Mike still has to get the game over with, but... Three, four, Hydra gives plus five right now. Okay, we have two quest counters so far on the Goblin Lord. We're going to eat the rest of your creatures in the graveyard, so Mike up to ten now. And then he'll also, I imagine, his own creatures because they don't have any purpose in the graveyard. Yep, eats two more up to twelve. 
Yeah, Scavengers is going to change this game completely, so... I think that's also going to be the creature that wins in the game, just because it gets to attack on its own. And Aspect of Hydra... So right now, uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. All right. Mike deciding now is the turn to go for it, so I'll turn them all sideways. Uh, I mean, if Matthew says no blocks, he is dead. Mike has uh, at least one aspect of Hydra, if not two. Uh, he's got an activation of Ronus. He's got two if he wants it. I don't think he needs both. Um, to give either the Balith or the Scoos plus two plus Owen oh Trample. Until end of turn. Have to imagine it's going on to the Scavenging Ooze. So we'll see what Matthew decides to do here. He's got four blockers. He's going to need to <laughs> make sure he blocks properly here. Three, yeah, this is this is the wrong. So he's just dead, right? Because he decided to only block scavenging use. So he's taking nine plus the trample here, which is eight. So he's taking seventeen at the moment. Yeah, he's he's dead. So, all right, Stompy takes a blistering game one. It's not very often you see goblins and Stompy go to turn fifteen, but we found it. We found a way. Yeah. <laughs> he does. <laughs> All right, so some sideboard choices coming here. I have to imagine both these players have sideboards stacked with answers for the opposing deck. I mean, these pillars of the format coming out to play here. No, he doesn't want to cast the lane. He just wants to show it to his opponent like, hey, if you were at three, you were dead. But unfortunately, you were at five. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, mono green, usually it's not even this version of mono green. Usually it's, it's mono green devotion. There's a devotion sub-theme in Mike's deck because you also have Aspect of Hydra, which has the devotion keyword on it, basically. So there's that. That's cool. Just showing Mikey's sideboarding roast. Didn't didn't even see that. <laughs> I mean, if you have the foresight to have roast in your sideboard because you know you're going to be facing down, you know, decks full of leatherback bailoffs and, you know, things like that caliber, you deserve to win. These players are 1-0. This guy's playing to go 2-0 here. Again, we have four rounds tonight, so one of these decks could go undefeated. Again, Matthew was just a goblin grenade away from winning that matchup. Just couldn't find the grenade. All right, Mike going to have a look here at his opening seven. Matthew going to do the same. We have turn one goblin guy. Is that flame slash? Do we have flame slash on our sideboard? There's roast in the opening hand, though. So look out. 
green creatures. Uh, Goblin God revealed a Strangle Root Geist. Here is a turn one Dryad Militant again. Mountain. Feel the deck doesn't play anything other than mountains for mana. Who needs more than that, right? No, okay. It wasn't. It was not Flame Slash. Here is a Mog War Marshal. It'll come into play. Get a one-one Goblin token. When it leaves play, you also get a one-one Goblin token. Um, it also has an Echo Cost of two. All right, Militant trades away for Goblin Guide. After giving Mike a land. Here we have Strangleroot Geist. Getting getting frisky. Here we go. Matthew opts not to block with the uh, Mog War Marshal. But we'll go ahead and sacrifice it. I like it. I like it. Just taking two points of damage for no reason. Uh, we have Quest for the Goblin Lord in our hand again. Which we will go ahead and play. Well, that, is that Flame Slash? That might actually be Flame Slash. Oh, the draw is a Leatherback Bailoff. Oh, that's going to get roasted so good. <laughs> Won't even see that coming. <laughs> Experiment 1 comes down. Math going to have a read. The 1-1 one, one with Evolve, and you can remove two plus one plus one counters from it to give it uh, a regenerate it. There is a second Strangle Root Geist, which will grow the Experiment 1. Maybe that's Ancient Grudge, which... No, that can't be right. Why are you playing Ancient Grudge? You don't play green mana. Uh, taking four, Matthew down to 14. We are going to Bolt Mike to the Dome. We're not messing around here. Reckless Bushwhacker. Oh boy. Oh man. Flame Slash Experiment 1 6 you? Oh yeah. This is a turn. That's Roast. That costs 2 mana. Okay, he's going to decide, you know what, I showed you. We're sticking with Roast. Went, went to correct himself and play the right card, but decided, no, you know what? Keeping this information hidden. We're playing Roast Boys to take away the Bushwhacker line. And now it doesn't have an answer for this Baloth. Oh, this Baloth is going to do work now. No answer available. Four more. Matthew down to ten. The draw was a Foundry Street Denizen. That can grow. That can grow. All right, what are we thinking here? We're gonna we're gonna play a denizen. Sure, sure. We get a quest for the goblin lord trigger, naturally. And then we're gonna put a bushwhacker down. That's gonna give another counter. Yeah, Mike, Mike going to say, yeah, you get it again. Okay. Denizen grows a little larger. In we're coming here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Leaving ourselves not quite dead on board. Balaf going to step in front there, of course. Uh, six will bring Mike to seven. Um, I feel that there is no top deck available to the Goblins player. That's not true. Viney, I think I think Mike has it won this turn with the Blossoming Defense, but no, he has a Feed the Clan. Okay, that'll also be good enough. That's gonna, I don't know. He also has the Defense to end the game, so yeah, it's it's exactly ten. So, uh, congrats.